Is your camera guy ready? It's important to get good stuff, you know. <laughs> Make sure that they know how to work the cameras yeah, yeah, yeah. and that the camera's batteries don't go out. That's you, JC. Uh, right, go on, what are your five questions? So, is the UK still Christian? Um, uh, constitutionally, the UK is still Christian. Right. But in every practical sense of the word, Christian, uh, the UK is a post-Christian country because our laws are no longer reflecting Christian values and Christian beliefs. And that rot, uh, you know, is, is now systemic uh, and overwhelming. And, and so in no real sense can we call uh, the UK a Christian country. And what do you think led to the decline of Christianity in the UK? Um, the Enlightenment and the fact that the Enlightenment erupted as an internal, uh, an internal revolution within the Western Christian world. And so Christians couldn't separate themselves from the Enlightenment. And, and so the Enlightenment infiltrated our churches, it infiltrated every aspect of our society and all of our institutions. And as it has worked itself out since the 1790s to the 1960s, it, it started off as a tiny bit of rot that maybe could have been reversed um, in otherwise good sound wood. But then it has become a disease that has rotted and hollowed out the wood to the point now where it's literally crumbled at the touch of a finger. And so it is the enlightenment that is the root source of the problem. And what we Christians must do to, to get over it is to return to a Christianity that is before the enlightenment, which I characterize with the catchphrase muscular Christianity. Um, is Christianity vital to British culture? Yes. Like, if, if, you're a Brit if you consider yourself British, then you can't get away from the fact that every aspect of our culture all of our institutions, every part of our world has been formed by a Christian worldview. And even the rejection of Christianity, which is now the world that we live in, is done rejecting the long shadow that Christianity casts over our culture and society. So we even, even the liberals who dominate our society are liberal fish in a Christian fishbowl. Right. And the, the, you know, they might have polluted the waters, mm -hmm. but they're still inside the Christian fishbowl. Though I think now what I'm starting to see is the actual fishbowl smash right. and the water pour out. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're all so desperately in trouble because we have exhausted the historical resources that Christianity gave to us ideologically. And now we've got nothing left. We're on an empty tank and we're literally just making up crap and our society is reflecting the rubbish that we're making up. I've heard you say before that this is not the worst shape Christianity has been in the UK. Do you have an example of that? Yes, in Roman times, Christianity was illegal and punishable by death. Right, um, good point actually. So in the modern UK, abortion's legal, yep. trans rights, yep. etc. Is yep. there still a place for Christianity to, uh, to come back with all of that sort of liberalism being official in law? Yes, absolutely. And, 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 but the thing is, Christians need to be better at sociology and practice um, theology a little less. Because the reality is that Christianity doesn't have problems in its values and it doesn't have problems in its doctrines. It has a problem in its structures. We have adopted the wrong social model for the occasion that we are in. The parish model or the mega church model is sociologically weak and it doesn't address the realities of the world that we live in today. The sociological model that we need to adopt as Christians is the Benedict option. And the Benedict option is when Christians collectivize, not in their hundreds, but in their thousands, dominate a local constituency and transform it by the full-blooded muscular expression, the full fat expression of their Christianity in all aspects of society, changing the economy, the politics, the culture and the economics of a given society. That is the way that we Christians go from being in steady retreat to getting back onto the front foot. Now, I, I, I'm not an illusionist, I, I'm not deluded. 
I don't think Catholics and Calvinists are going to set up a Christian commune together. So what I invite is all you Calvinists go and set up one Benedict option in one place. All you Catholics go and set up a Benedict option in another place. All you Orthodox go and set up a Benedict option in another place. All you Gafcon Anglicans go and set up a Benedict option in another place. And we'll see which of us manages to convert the country first. And then the rest just get to live as Christian minorities in an otherwise Christian world. And the way that you govern a society based upon uh, multiple Christian denominations uh, uh, inhabiting the same political space is by adopting and slightly modifying the American Constitution that was written with that reality in mind. Right. Final question, Bob. If not Christianity, is there a better alternative to way of life in the UK? No, there is no better alternative to Christianity in the UK. All other options are less than what a Christian worldview could give us. However, if I had to choose between liberal secularism and Sharia law, I'd choose liberal secularism. And the reason why is that classical liberalism was built on the scaffolding of Christianity. And classical liberalism looks a lot like Christianity. And so as a Christian, I wouldn't feel completely persecuted or alien from the, the, the classical liberal world. And that, incidentally, is exactly why, when ideologically, after the Enlightenment, the world swapped from Christian to classical liberal, the Christians didn't feel a threat and they didn't react to it. But classical liberalism slides into progressive liberalism. It can't do anything else. And that's why that we're dying in the West. So we have to consciously reject liberalism. We have to adopt the Benedict option. We have to live a muscular faith. And we have to unite across denominations, denominations against the enemies of the church. Can I ask one more question? You can ask as many as you like. You got me until you've run out of questions. <laughs> um, so with the rise of Islam in the UK, how do we fight back as Christians? How do we kind of um, make the UK Christian again when Islam is on the rise and rapidly? Well, there's two things to do there. One is that we should reverse every and all aspects of Sharia law, whether that be cultural or political. So things like banning the Adan from mega speaker, banning halal meat, banning the burqa. Um, but we should also have a political vision ourselves. The problem with lots of Christians is they haven't yet realized, even President Putin has not yet realized that Christianity should influence the whole of your politics. And that means as Christians, we need to commit to the idea of building another Christendom, of building a new Christendom. And that new Christian Christendom means that our, our politics, our economics, our society and our culture are guided by the beliefs and the values of the Christian faith in establishing a Christian worldview that governs all areas of our lives. And when that happens, you will find in that worldview the ideological resources to deal with Islamization. And I want to make a, a distinction between Islamization and Sharia law and Muslims. I'm not talking about dealing with Muslims. I'm talking about dealing with Islamization and Sharia law. Because Muslims become less Muslim when aspects of their faith are done away with. And you see that in lots of places that were de-Islamified. Right. And there are lots of examples of de-Islamification. Spain was de-Islamified. Portugal was de-Islamified. Sicily was de-Islamified. Greece was de-Islamified. Albania was de-Islamified. Uh, the many places in the Caucasus were de-Islamified. You know, many caliphates were de-Islamified. And so de-Islamification can occur. But it only occurs when you, in a, in a vibrant, muscular, full-fatted, unapologetic, dare I say even aggressive way, Christianize a society. What's the best way to evangelize in the UK? The best way to evangelize in the UK is the use of social media. The Areopagus, which is the place of public debate, is no longer the high street. Christians are obsessed with the high street. We fetishize the idea of what it means to preach the gospel 
as being someone who stands on a street corner and shouts like a madman to everyone else. Stop doing that. That is a terrible way to evangelize. The Areopagus, the place of public debate, is social media. Use social media to evangelize society because that is the place where people go for knowledge. And what we should be doing is, whatever the current topic of conversation is, whatever the issue is in our society, we should be finding that at Christian angle on that question and making the argument that Christianity gives the best answer to the question at hand. How do we deal with the migrant crisis? Let's see what Christianity says about that. How do we deal with the demographic crisis? Let's see what Christianity says about that. How do we deal with the financial crisis? Let's see what Christianity says about that. And give the answer that is the best answer we can work out from our own faith and say that that is a better answer than the liberal answer or the Sharia answer. Do you think mass immigration has an impact on the, um, the kind of Christianity in the UK? Um, left unfiltered and uncontrolled, yes it certainly is doing, because most of the migrants that are coming here illegally are from Muslim countries. And they're not dropping their child marriage, uh, pro-slavery, pro-killing apostates, pro-polygamy, pro-abortion, degeneracy at the borders. And so they're bringing those attitudes into the church, uh, sorry, into the, 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 the English society. And so I'm not against migration. I just want migration that's good for the church. So I would exchange as many Muslims from the UK who support Sharia law from a Pakistani background for all the Christians in Pakistan. Which means all you ethno racists who think I might be on your side and all you white supremacists who think you might be on your side. I don't want less Pakistanis in the UK. I just want the Pakistanis in the UK to be Christian. I don't want less Indians in the UK. I just want the Indians in the UK to be Christian. I don't want less Africans in the UK. I just want the Africans in the UK to be Christian. And so we should create a immigration policy that builds up the church. Thank you, Bob. All right. Thank you look after yourself. God bless. You. Peace be with you, brother. And you. Right. Anybody want to grab their microphones?